Hi everyone. In this video we're going to answer this very specific question that relates to the epsilon delta definition of limit. So given this function x squared over 16 whose graph we have pictured here we're going to consider the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x. So again it should be clear from the graph that the limit is 1 but we want to see how this relates to the epsilon delta definition. So if epsilon is equal to 0 0.1, we need to find the largest value of delta such that if x is between 4 minus delta and 4 plus delta, then f of x is between 16 minus epsilon and 16 plus epsilon. Okay, so let's switch to looking at this Desmos graph for a minute. And remember that we can turn on all of the different uh, the point that we're interested in and then also the horizontal and vertical bands that relate to epsilon and delta. Okay, so for this problem we're given that epsilon is 0 0.1, so we'll change the slider for epsilon down to 0 0.1, and remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the largest possible width of the blue band such that all the points whose x values are in the blue band produce function values that are in the orange band. Okay, so to help us think about it, we can just turn off the part of the graph that's outside of the blue band, right? And then we can just start experimenting with delta, right? Clearly, it needs to be made smaller since function values are outside of the orange band. But uh, as we get closer and closer, we can see that, you know, maybe right around here, delta equals 0 0.18. That looks about the right delta that produces function values in this band. Okay, so let's think about how we can do this algebraically. So instead of just zooming in on the graph and trying to get our approximation of delta to be better and better, we should just think about what is happening, what, what x values we're really trying to solve for here. Okay, so remember, we're concerned with the x value of 4 and precisely how far we're allowed to go from 4 on either side while still producing function values that are close to 1. Okay, and if you look at the graph, you can see that, well, I can go all the way until exactly this intersection point, and that's how far I can go to the right, and on the left, I can go exactly to this intersection point, and that's how far I can go on the left. Okay, so delta is going to be one of these two distances, whichever one is smaller. And finding these intersection points is not so difficult, since we know that this is the graph of the function y equals x squared over 16, and these are the lines y equals 1.1 and y equals 0 0.9, right? 1 plus and minus 0 0.1. Okay, so in order to find this left intersection point, we just need to set the function x squared over 16 equals to 0 0.9. And similarly, to find the one on the right, we need to set x squared over 16 equals 1.1. Okay, so both of these equations just involve multiplying by 16 and taking the positive square root. Positive because we know we're looking at the right side of this function. We don't care that it intersects also on the other side for some negative x value. Okay, so we look at that and we can compute that this is approximately... 3.7947 dot 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 and on the other side right we would solve similarly and get x is the square root of 16 times 1.1 and that's approximately 4.1952 okay so what we've done is we found the coordinates of these x values where the graph leaves the orange band for the first time so on the left it's 3. 7947, and on the right, 4.19. So, right, these are just approximations, but if we wanted more accuracy, we could have just computed the square root to more decimal places. Okay, so now that we have the points at which these intersections occur, we can translate that into distances that we're allowed to move from the center point x equals 4. Okay, so if I want to go from 4 over to 4.9, then the distance that I've traveled is 4.1952 minus 4. That would be 0 0.1952. Okay, so that corresponds to this distance on the right here. The distance we're allowed to move to the right of x equals 0 0.4 is exactly 
0 0.1952. And similarly, right, we would subtract 4 minus this other x value to see how far we're allowed to move to the left. That works out to a distance of 0 0.20526 dot dot dot. Okay, and so again, that difference of x values gives us a distance on the x-axis that we're allowed to move away from the center point of x equals 4. Okay, so now that we have these two distances that we're allowed to move on either side, we can compute delta. Right, so delta is the distance that you're allowed to move in either direction while staying within the orange band. So it takes maybe a minute to convince yourself that when you have a choice between a distance you can go to the left and a distance that you can go to the right, delta is always going to be the smaller of those two distances. Right? It's always safe to move this distance in both directions. You're not going to exit the orange band. So I'll just remark that if you wanted to be even more precise, you might have noticed that, well, since the intersection on the right side occurs first, and that occurs at this x value of square root of 16 times 1.1, we can leave our answer exact in terms of this value. So really the true delta is the point on the right, which is x equals the square root of 16 times 1.1, and then we need to subtract from that the x value of 4 to arrive at this exact value to our question of which 0 0.1952 is just an approximation good to four decimal places. Okay, so now I want to switch gears quickly and consider seemingly totally separate problem. Okay, and it goes like this. You work at a company and part of one of your production processes involves taking lengths of wire and bending them into squares. Okay, so depending on the length of the input wire, the square will have a different area. And for a certain product, we need to have squares that are exactly one inch. Okay, well, nothing is exactly one inch, so we have some margin of error. Exactly one inch plus or minus a tenth of an inch. Okay, so given that we have this target range for our areas of our outputs, what kind of restrictions do we need to place on the inputs, or what is the ideal length of an input and the largest margin of error that we can allow? Okay, so why don't you think about that question for a minute, and hopefully you've realized that this is not so different from the previous question. Okay, specifically if we consider the functional relationship between the length of the input, which we can call x, and the area of the output, which we can write as capital A, and if you think about it, right, well, what's the area, how does the area depend on the length? Well, maybe first we bend it in half so that each length is x over 2, and then we bend those halves in half, and then we would have four equal lengths, each of which has side length x over 4. Okay, so, right, we take the length x and then we split it into four equal parts that become the sides of our square. So it seems that the area, well, it's really just a function of x, right? It's the side length squared. Okay, and, right, that is a familiar function. Okay, so this function tells us, given x in inches of wire f of x is the area in square inches of the resulting square. Okay, and if you realize what's going on here, we're just asking a question about, well, if I need my areas, my function values, to be within a certain margin of error, like 1 plus 0 0.1 or 1 minus 0 0.1, Right, we just need to know well, which function values produce those areas, which lengths of wire are acceptable. Okay, so maybe by now you've realized that we've already answered this question. And in fact, the acceptable lengths of wire would be x equals 4. That would produce exactly the answer that we want. But if we stay within plus or minus 0 0.1952 inches, Right, all of these squares will have area 
between 1.1 and 0 0.9. Okay, so this is maybe a nice way that you can think about how the ideas involved in the epsilon delta definition are actually quite natural to consider. It's just that we're trying to get you to think of them from a more abstract perspective.